morning, Orsia family. This is uh, early morning. I'm talking to Johan and Blair Skippers. They are currently in, in Pretoria and they are going to immigrate to the US in the next few weeks. So I wanted to talk to them uh, about the plans, what they are going through, what the uh, um, stress levels are like the last few weeks before you leave. So, um, Johan Blair, I don't know who wants to start. Just tell me uh, a little bit about you guys, and uh, we start there. Uh, we are we are a family of four. We live in Pretoria. Um, we've been married for fifteen years. Blair is from the US. She um, she's been in South Africa, which would have been sixteen years in January. But yeah, we are leaving for the US next week, Friday, on the eighth of uh, December. Um, our kids are, our daughter is 12 and our um, our son is nine. So it's grade three and grade six. Um, and yeah, we are heading for Charlotte or the North Carolina area. We're still deciding where exactly we're going to go. Um, yeah, so that's our, that's our plan. We sold our business here in South Africa um, and we're coming to the U.S. to open it there. That's, that's fantastic. I so first question, Blair, I mean, you've been in the, in South Africa 16 years, right? Does that feel like home now? I mean, you've started a family there, you got married there, kids are there. Does it feel like home now? I feel like when we go and visit the U.S., I even feel a little bit um, like an outsider and I get excited. I'm like, wow, look at the grocery store, you know, because we don't have as many options here. And when I'm in South Africa, everyone says, you've been here for 16 years, but you haven't lost your accent. And then I get to America and everyone like, what's wrong with your accent? You sound so funny. You know, so it's like, I don't, it, I almost don't fit anywhere yet, but um, at the moment. What is the big date, right? When are you guys leaving South Africa? Yes, it's next week, Friday on the, on the 8th of December. So uh, I think our countdown is at 10 days today. Um, yeah, so the, we are definitely very, very nervous. Um, we've uh, actually, we've moved out of our house. We're currently living with my parents for the, I think we've, we've been there for two weeks. Our house is packed up. We, um, our container is being loaded on Friday. Um, yeah, so a lot of things are happening at the same time. Cars are being sold. You know, I think a lot of our, the people listening to the video have done the same thing. They, I think they know, might know what we're going through, but yeah, it's it's well, it's definitely very very stressful at this point in time. So I mean, I I've, I've immigrated three times with my family, and and it never gets easier. Um, even when we moved back to South Africa from England, kind of going home, but it it wasn't home. It was eight years that we've been away. You moved back to South Africa. It was still stressful packing up in England. Still scary. So, I mean, talk me through kind of the, the last minute things that you're going through now um, in terms of admin. We, we can get to the emotional side in a bit, but I mean, there's a lot of admin stuff that you got to do, right? Packing up, selling cars. What's kind of the last things on your list that you got to get through before you leave? Yeah, so that, I think that the big challenge for me was that we, we've known that this was going to happen uh, probably from October, November last year when we started applying for my green card. The kids and Blair um, have got American passports, so it was just me who had to apply. But we knew the process was going to be a year. Um, and all this time, you can't really do anything. We just had to wait and, um, you know, till the end. And now suddenly it, it's all happening. But now it's we are closing bank accounts. We, are, uh, we still have to transfer our savings to the U.S., it's um, selling the cars, um, selling our house, um, handing over the business. Handing over the business. It's a, it's a, it's a big part of it. The kids need to finish school, um, all those kind of things. Our medical aid that needs to be cancelled. Our insurance, our investments. Um, yeah, all, all, all those kind of things. And the tough part about it is that you couldn't, even though we knew it was happening, most of those things, most of those things, you couldn't really cancel beforehand. You had to wait now until the end, this last two weeks. You still want your medical aid in South Africa till the last day. Yeah, absolutely. We found it quite useful um, to go for a medical checkup before we left South Africa to come to the U.S., uh, stuff like d dental work, anything that you need done 
get all that done before you leave because you're going to, you know, you'll be in stasis when you arrive here. You won't have all of those things figured out. And it might take you a few months to register with a, a new dentist. I mean, there's a big shortage uh, in our area here. We live in North Carolina, so I know exactly where you're moving to. Uh, it took us like four months to get a, you know, an appointment with a new dentist to register. Now, you can go for emergency work, but uh, if you want to register as a new patient, you know, ongoing, it takes a long time. So get that stuff out the way. Um, yeah, we actually have an angel appointment for tomorrow. So, yeah, I know we exactly. <laughs> okay, perfect. We did it a few months ago, so that I don't, I'm not expecting anything big, but yeah, just maybe there's a, a filling or a, something small that, that happened in the meantime and getting that checked out 100%. Or even a haircut, you know, it's, it's only a, a small amount here compared to what I have heard I'm going to have to pay in America. Oh, yes, if my wife goes, uh, we have to decide whether we eat that month or she goes to the hairdresser. Some things, yeah, exactly. some things are a, a lot cheaper in the U.S. And I guess relative to to the income here, you have expendable income. But it will seem insane in terms of prices if you can convert it back to rands. That's something you should just leave on the plane as soon as you land because it will drive you insane. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, right. Let's talk quickly about that balance between fear and apprehension and excitement and stress that you're going through these last few um, weeks. And um, talk me through, you know, mentally what you're going through before you leave. I guess for me, it's different. You know, I'm moving home to my parents and I've got a brother and a sister and lots of aunts and cousins. So it feels as if should it not work out, you know, the business takes a little bit. I can always just get in the car and go to my mom's house and cry to her. Um, it's not like moving to Japan or Australia or wherever. And, you know, no one, you don't really know the language, what have you. It's a bit different, I think, for us. I think the stressful thing is because it is home to me now. I've been here for 16 years. Um, it's sad because we are happy. You know, our business is doing well in South Africa. We're not escaping a life that isn't going well. We have a nice house. We have, nice, you know, cars. Um, the kids have a lot of friends. So now to, to take them out of that environment and now for a few weeks or so, they're not going to have any friends. Ava's birthday is coming up. She's turning 13. She's devastated. No one's coming to her birthday party. Um, so you and Maxie better be there <laughs> with the boys. Um, we're going to rent a crowd for her because 13 is a big deal in a little girl's life. And yeah, you know, those things, I'm just, I know they'll be fine, but I am worried that we were so happy here. You know, we, we just want to give them a better education and be able to attend university in the U.S. and start our life there, um, which is why we're moving and our business there. But yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's a roller coaster of, of emotions because these are the our family. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, so uh, for me on the other end, as a South African moving that side, you know, I've, I've lived in Pretoria for 42 years. Um, we we have a lot of friends and my my family still yeah, I have a brother my parents are yeah, have cousins here yeah. and you know that those are the things that you're giving up and, and like Blue said you always wonder are you going to be happy are you going to make friends are you um are your kids going to make friends so those are the and just general will you be happy um and that I think that's the biggest worry um and I from speaking to other people that the, the kids adapt way easier than the adults um but I, th I think that's the emotions that's going through us uh at the moment and just well i mean i i got i was given the best advice when um when we moved uh, to the uk the first time we immigrated and i was ho homesick a lot i missed my family but I also enjoyed a lot of what the UK had to offer. You have to embrace what's there. And somebody told me, you know, don't focus on the 20% you leave behind, focus on the 80% you gain. Now, mm. I don't think the math works out like it's 100% total, you, you know, your life and your happiness. 
but it kind of gave me the idea if you, if you focus on the big hole that's left behind that would be all consuming eventually and a lot of people then just go back home uh you have to embrace and focus on what is new and challenging and the opportunities in the new country i mean north carolina if you move to charlotte you will have access to a lot of south africans there is a massive expat community there you can speak afrikaans every weekend go to a braai every weekend if you move a little bit out of that kind of center out into where we live up in the mountains it's beautiful here but there isn't a south african nearby you have to embrace the local culture you know i started drinking moonshine growing a, a beard buying a truck and saying words like some bitch you know you have to embrace <laughs> the local culture and and yeah. fit in so um talk to him about uh, you know moving here you said you don't know where you're going to how do you plan then for the schools or do you have a town in mind you know what's happening with the kids where are you sending that container like talk me uh, to talk through like the process this end yeah so the, i think that's the uh, the part we are we are lucky with this is that Blair have got family there so our plan is is to move in with her sister for a month or two while we wait for our container to arrive and um but we know that we have family there so we can we should live close to them to having to have that support structure is a massive benefit um so if her sister is in charlotte we will get go there as her parents are in Hickory, um also north carolina um so i'm i'm leaning towards a smaller town um uh, Hickory is what we're looking at but we might even go to another town but it will definitely be one of the carolinas um, so if in the, uh, during December, we will have to decide where we're going to live as the kids will start school, probably on the 2nd of January. Um, but yeah, we're very much leaning to, to Hickory. So our kids, um, they were only, uh, in school for a short while in South Africa, in the Afrikaans class. Um, and, and they had to adapt and learn to speak English <laughs> here in the U S. But the schools were very supportive. Uh, it's incredible, the school system here, uh, the, the level of support you get. And, I mean, our kids can't be happier. They keep telling us all the time. They're so happy we made the move. It was tough initially, but you're right. They did adapt quicker than we did. You know, we are stuck in our ways and in our culture, and you miss that. Where the kids just, within a few weeks, are like, oh, we made new friends. We're quite happy. We're so glad we moved. And... They appreciate that now years later. So I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, but what about the business? You uh, Tell me about the business that you have in South Africa. And you've sold that, but you want to still do something similar in the U.S. Could you just talk me through that, please? Um, yes. Yeah, so we, we started a business in South Africa um, called Basketly. Um, we basically... Uh, sell decorative baskets and a few other de home decor products. Um, we started back in 2019 um, in South Africa. And then we also started the business uh, with partners in, in New Zealand. And they also um, shipped the products there to Australia. Um, so it, the business grew really nice. We supply, we supply wholesale customers um, throughout South Africa, obviously doing the online sales. Um, so when we decided to go to the U.S., we sold the business um, over a year and we're going to start fresh in the U.S. Um, with pr pretty much the same product line. Um, we'll start online, but uh, I think our big focus will be business to business, um, wholesale. Um, so I think well, that's also a big difference. Most of the people immigrating, you know, immigrate for, you know, have professional jobs or they just move straight into a, a, a career a, into a career where we're going to start our businesses i'm in imports i'm going to continue with that um so and blair, blair was always more running the basket business and not me doing the procurement and the accounting side of it so yeah to, together we'll tackle it again and i'm sure if you can make it work in africa you can make it work in the us and and um yeah we're excited about that <laughs> that's that's very true um my wife 
came over on a work visa. She started like within a month, she was up and running. Um, I had to wait for an EAD, which is your employment authorization document. That in the end took about 10 months. So for the first time in my life, I sat home. I wasn't allowed to work. And if they, they catch you, there, there's serious visa consequences. So it was my first ever excuse to stay home. But getting going with that gap was, was tough. So for a lot of people immigrating, uh, the partner might not have authorization to work and it's going to be very tough. So people watching have to think about that, planning for that. But it did allow me time to spend with my kids, you know, for the first time, like not go to work every morning and come back in the evening, like spending the whole day until they got into school. So you've got to embrace whatever situation you go into, right? Uh, let's quickly talk about the fact that uh, the temperature, for instance, now has dropped from 80 down to 40, like it saw a speed cop. I mean, it just, went straight into winter last week um do you guys moving in the middle of winter a lot of people can't choose when they immigrate so this will be a big adjustment you know wearing winter clothes getting used to staying indoors maybe more you know how do you see that as a as a fact that not being able to dry in, this, in the beautiful sunshine for a few months well, there's a heat wave in Pretoria right now, and we are dying of sweat. So I think um, <laughs> the winter will be a, um, a a nice change. And I think for the kids, you know, in South Africa, especially in Pretoria, we don't really have cold days. We don't get snow. It w might be warmer during the day and get cold at night, but we don't really have a cold, cold winter. So our kids are super excited about being able to have the four seasons. And that's when ever, anybody ever asks me, what's the weather like in North Carolina? And I say, we have four proper seasons. You have a proper winter, a proper spring, summer. Yuan has never been to North Carolina in summer. I mean, it's hotter than it is right now in Pretoria. Yeah. Um, and I and I, I laugh about that. I'm, I even say, I haven't even been as hot in Mozambique as I am in Charlotte in the middle of June, you know? <laughs> um so yeah i think we're excited especially the idea of snow you know the kids they've seen it a few times on our holidays but they didn't grow up with a real winter so i think they're excited about it yeah i mean my kids love it you have to learn to embrace all the seasons as well as the culture i spoke about um uh, you know learn to ski or find something you can do for the three months that it snows uh it's not frequent in north carolina uh unless you're up in the mountains where we are but you know get stuck into the activities learn to wear those ridiculous tennis things on your feet and walk in the snow you know uh, or go skiing do something that you can still be outdoors or otherwise you get really really depressed and that's another thing where the kids kind of lead the example you know they adapt so quickly within two hours of being on the slopes they're skiing down there and you're still falling in your face you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, they they learn so quick, they adapt so quickly. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure that the kids will find it much easier. Um, now, rural schools uh, in Hickory or if anywhere around that town is is very much different to what I've, uh, you know, I was a teacher in South Africa to kind of modern South African schools. You know, there's still a lot of uh, respect. There's still a lot of discipline. The kids are there to learn. So it's a wonderful school environment. The cities are different. I guess the cities are the same all over the world. I taught in England and I taught in Johannesburg. Uh, it's Cities are just more difficult in terms of uh, the kids schooling unless you get into a, a uh, private school, I guess. So I'm, I'm happy that you guys are going to get a good school for the kids. Um, do you look at uh, neighborhoods and stuff because uh, you're – zoning in the u.s is very important so people have to realize when you move to the u.s you can't just pick the school and get the little bus and they're going to um uh you know office from wherever in the city if you don't live in that zip code they can't go to that school so have you done any research or planning around this i see you shaking your head Blair. i was just laughing because you like but if we move here we can go to school there and i'm like 
this is your first lesson in moving to America. You can't break the rules <laughs> as you do in South Africa. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work like that. And he says, no, but just send them an email and ask. I'm like, that is the law. So I actually got online and I Googled, if you live outside of a school district in America, can you go to whatever school you want to? And actually, a lot of the states have changed the rules, except for three. And guess which one is part of that three? <laughs> North Carolina. It's just a law. If you pay taxes and you live in that area, you um, that's the school you go to. So going back to um, the con more conservative school, that's kind of why, why, why we're leaning more towards Hickory, because our kids have been going to school in an African school that is Christian based, more conservative. They've really created such a, an amazing learning environment that I feel a bit scared about that we don't have the 50000 a year for a, a private school. Um, but I, I do think I, we will be able to find a proper public school. So I have asked some people that I know from Hickory and then obviously my friends in Charlotte and I look on Zillow okay, this is the school, what houses are available in that area? Yeah, I mean, you you don't realize how important the zoning is if you live in a city. Now, normally the small towns, our little town has uh, 2,500 people. There's one school, you know, in the whole school district, the, the whole county has one high school. That's the high school the whole county goes to, 15 thousand people in the whole county i mean it's nearly the size of gauteng it's uh it's rural yeah. it's small town but you can find a lot of south, south african values still here or comparable um um you know versus what we experienced in england uh in our little town there's uh 30 churches and one liquor store um <laughs> In England, that would have been one working church and 30 pubs, you know, be the other yeah. way around. It's also a lovely culture, but it it really depends on what you're looking for. We live in the Bible Belt here in the mountains. People are still very religious, still very um, old school values, if you can put it that way. But, I mean, you can find whatever culture or society, whatever you want in the U.S. It's massive. It's diverse. And that's the beauty of it. If you plan well, you can really go and find a spot that suits your personality, your family, your values. So, yeah, I mean, it, I'm sure it's going to be great in Hickory. It's not too far away from us. We can actually meet up and uh, we'll take you guys skiing. Um, what about the kind of last minute planning? Talk me through uh, now you're going to get on the plane saying goodbye to family do you do like a big farewell or you, do you just avoid it or do a last minute goodbye cry at the airport some people don't even want their family at the airport what's the plan around that yeah so we um we decided to to have a farewell it was actually on sunday the past sunday um the kids wanted to have you know a last party with their with their friends and so the our son invited a bunch of his friends and our daughter invited her friends and some of their parents attended. We invited, I, you know, since I'm from Pretoria, I still have uh, friends from primary school. Um, yeah, so we there was 110 adults and I think 127 kids. It was a massive... <laughs> Did you say goodbye to the whole party, Pretoria? But, yeah, we started at 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the whole Pretoria was there. But uh, it was so much fun. And it the nice thing about it is it gave everyone an opportunity if they wanted to, to come say bye. Because, you know, this last week, you really don't have time to have lunch or breakfast with everyone. Um, so, um, but yeah, it, uh, you get to a point where you're like, uh, yeah, I think we're ready. We, as a family, we are ready to go. The kids are ready. They, they're asking how many days is left. Um, they they, they want to fly now and get it over and done with. We, we've been looking forward to the to the trip for a long while. It's not a trip, it's a move. But <laughs> we've been looking forward to it for a long time and um, yeah, we, we're ready. So uh, just talking about you guys arriving here in the new business and I'll and I'll finish on that. You know that uh, you can uh, post a link on Ushia. We try and help as many uh, South African businesses abroad as we can. There is a shop function there. Uh, so we wish you all the best Moving to the U.S., I know it's a tough time you're going through, but 
you know, just stick at it, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm sure it's going to be fantastic this side. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank we look you. forward to seeing you guys.